Hello everyone, today is January the 4th and this is a new Hearthstone Hour. We're going to be looking at a couple of things I did to improve and I'm going to be helping you guys improve as well through a couple of drills, talking you through a couple of uh, habit loops that I have and that I think are very useful. Um, so yeah, basically let's just let's just get straight into, uh, into the first game and uh, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So first of all, I want to tell you guys in case you don't yet, you want to have some hotkeys for camera hotkeys. All right, I have my camera hotkeys, control F1 till control F7. Uh, my, 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 my thumb isn't stretchy enough to reach control F8. I apologize that my fingers aren't massive and my hand isn't as big as yours maybe. Uh, F1 till F7, so I have seven potential bases. Now, this first drill that I like to do or that I used to like to do a lot, I don't do it as much anymore these days as it's not that useful once you reach a certain level. Uh, think maybe low grand master or something like that. Um, but it's a fun little warm up. Basically what you're gonna be doing is we're just gonna be maxing out on probes. And uh, you're like, well, that doesn't sound very fun at all, but um, maybe it isn't, but it is really, really useful in a way. So what we want to do when we start with this is we don't really want to have a build order. We don't want to optimize this, okay? This is important. The moment we start thinking about optimizing it, this probably doesn't become as useful anymore. What we want to do is just the moment we have 400 minerals, we want to build a nexus. And the rest of the time, we just want to make sure we have no chrono boost on any of our bases and we never get supply blocked. Now we can micro our workers, we can do all that. And the way we want to be moving our probes around is through the help of camera hotkeys. So I'll set up some camera hotkeys. We see base one, base two, base four, five, six, and then maybe we can take this as seven. Make sure we're always producing workers as well and we should be completely fine. And the thing that this does is that it helps us wait i skipped something oh, yeah. um is that it helps us um basically set up like a a, a bit of a, a habit loop and what i mean with that is that whenever you play this game or whenever you really do anything but especially when you play this game is we kind of have a, 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 a or more of a sequence of things that we do a sequence of of little uh tricks or a little little moves that we have and in this case that's just going to be focused on building workers and building next size so this is really one of the bo most basic sequences now this only uh includes really two things so we have our nexus and our probes this is two components in our in our in our little sequence so it's going to be relatively easy to to do this properly because we don't have many components here and the goal is to start with something very basic and get very very good at those basics again and again and again uh, so th th this is really in this case just going to be building probes building next and later on we're going to be uh putting in more things. And the reason why this is so useful is because the thing that happens as higher level StarCraft is, is not that necessarily people are that much more strategically brilliant. It's that a lot of the time they're just a little bit faster as well with just everything. So what we wanna do into this sequence, we wanna add more and more and more things. So for now it's just Nexus and Probe, but we can add Nexus Probe uh, unit production, then Nexus Probe scouting, Nexus Probes uh, scouting and our army control, our army movement. There's a there's a bunch of things we can be doing, and it's very important that we add these things step by step, and then increase the things, the speed of these things slowly, uh, bit by bit. So we want to kind of start from a slow pace where we can do two things well, then we want to add another thing, then we want to add another thing, and we just keep going until we're at a level where you can do all those things at the same time. And then congratulations, you're a professional StarCraft two player. So this is really the the, the the basics of of starcraft in a way um and it's also a great moment to think about how you want to be creating this 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 loop this sequence of things like how um, how do i want to hotkey things how do i want to move probes around like i think ideally you want to be moving probes around with the use of camera hotkeys so we never want to have any oversaturation on any of the bases when we do this obviously and we can always just check that so we see okay this space is not oversaturated but there is something wrong here um now what is wrong here is that we have one mineral patch that only has one worker so we can fix that 
So there's a couple of layers to this where you can be like, okay, first of all, I want to make sure that I never get supply block, that I'm always building workers. And whenever I have 400 minerals, I build a nexus. Then the next step is going to be maybe uh, making sure that all your chrono boost stays spent as well and then the next step could be that you never have more than 16 workers on any base and the step after that is that all your bases have uh, ap appropriate mining so that every patch is covered by uh, by two by two workers rather than uh, workers running around like a bunch of idiots so we look at this and we see okay this is fine we look at this and see okay this is fine and we're just gonna continue this until we're maxed out. And if you do it like this, um, one of the nice things um, is that you get very familiar with switching between bases with the camera hotkeys. Now, while you're doing this, you can also start thinking about things like, hey, where where would I wanna position pylons maybe if I were to for vision or where would I put units for spotter? So you can, for example, do things like this, like, hey, you can you can practice this obviously on different maps like hey would this give me good map vision and how quickly can i do that you know like whoop, whoop. send one unit here send one unit here and now bam we have good vision of the mini map maybe i want to build uh, another dude first though so yeah you see my my chrono boost is staying relatively low all of this is uh, is going extremely well my production is good i'm gonna start floating a little bit of minerals now because i won't have the production to continuously spend my money so i'm going to have to build a couple of extra next eye at this point and that's completely fine so here we see oh uh, this base is basically full and then we're just going to continue on with our little challenge so we make sure hey is everything mining correctly here this seems completely fine that's good this is good uh, and then we're just going to continue building more and more of these next time. now with this with with this specific challenge i don't care too much about the timing because you can obviously optimize it by by, by doing things faster cutting workers here and there but the goal is just to get these mechanics down you never want above 500 minerals probably when you play this um and you never want your like you did there's certain goals you set to yourself and then you just try to reach them once you're capable of reaching this uh once or twice i'd say uh, you don't need this challenge as much anymore and i'm gonna recommend you one of the other drills that i'll show you after this so i i, I can completely play this out but as i don't think this is too interesting as we're just gonna keep building next eye and nexus let's just tab out of this and once again really think about how we want to do these things and why we want to do these things is, is first of all really to create a solid sequence uh really get, get the basics down because without the basics we're absolutely no so start with probes nexus then once we've done this drill and we kind of warmed up we can go into our second drill which is going to be a build order drill now um i know a lot of you don't have 12 hours a day to focus on starcraft 2 like some of us do um <laughs> so perhaps you won't be able to do all four drills one uh, like the probe one and then one for every matchup in that case i suggest doing the drill of the matchup you're the worst in um but yeah we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later let's just hop into that game all right so this next little thing that i have is just going to be a build order that i really like to play and the reason for that is because it's a really tight build order. it's a pvz build order this is one of my favorite build orders to play just because it's so extremely easy to to mess this one up in uh, in some way and even at higher level it's really tricky to get it done properly especially if you're playing against a real opponent so i always feel like this is one of those builds that you really can keep playing forever and you're always going to find small things you can improve yourself in which is extremely important then once again we're just going to be looking at the build order for now and doing these things in a stress-free environment because i know once we get into a more stressful environment this build is going to go worse and that's okay part of it is practicing it in a stress-free environment so we know what to do in theory so we don't have to think when we get in these more stressful situations so keep that in mind and mm, I'm also going to be talking a bit during this of when it comes to stuff like time allotment and time allocation and how we can really think about that in, uh, in, in a normal way. I feel like a lot of the time when people talk about um, the way you allocate time in StarCraft 2, so, something that's really common for 
people to say to lower level players or to even higher levels, just focus on macro. Once you get to like Diamond One or Masters One, I don't know, whatever random league they pick, uh, they'll be like, you can start working on your micro. And this is such a crap approach to the game, honestly. Um, it makes absolutely no sense to just focus on one skill when StarCraft 2 is so much more than that. And they say, well, people that just focus on microing tend to be all inners, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It just makes absolutely no sense to be very good at one part of the job and be really, really crap at another part of it. It makes more sense to kind of go up with these together. It's going to make you grow way faster. Um, it tends to be easier as well to improve initially at things than then later on so you kind of have the, the the curve of improvement which goes like this right um the, the 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 higher level you get the harder it is to get major improvements and it, if you have these separate skills it just means that you're gonna be working for example five hours to get like a one percent increase in macro well in these five hour like Im imagine you're already at 20 percent at macro right you're gonna need five hours for another one percent there but if you're at zero percent at your your micro skill and you put five hours in you might actually get to 10 or 12 percent like the invested time and what you get back from it is just it's just way more just thinking of basic concepts so i really hate when people say well just think about this as just more stuff beats less stuff but that's completely untrue if i micro five stalkers and a disruptor i'm gonna be able to kill 40 40 stalkers if the other guy just doesn't micro at all like i can just kite back forever it's like how do i win this game i had more stuff it's like well yeah it's because you didn't look at your army and you listen to some random guy saying that macro always trumps micro it's just not true uh, in the hands of a good micro player, uh, a smaller army can be way more useful. And this is something you really got to remember, that this is the the toxic propaganda that the that the, the macro economist put in your head. <laughs> All right, let's go into this game. And I'll, I'll tell you guys how to do it as well, okay? I'm not just going to tell you to focus more on micro, but I'm going to show you how to think about micro in a, uh, in, in a healthy way. Because... The reason why a lot of people say uh, you don't want to focus on micro at all is because people tend to over micro things that don't matter at all. Like they'll give the same amount of attention to their first scouting reaper as they would give to their uh, 200 supply army, which is all of their attention. Now, the way you want to be thinking about allocating time is you want to basically be thinking of it in, in value. Okay, you want to be thinking, let me just pause it for this actually, this is important. So imagine I have a Reaper and uh, the estimated value I can get out of this Reaper is 50 minerals, right? The moment this Reaper that I'm microing impacts my own build more than those 50 minerals that I might be getting as an expected value, that attention is not worth it. We should be seeing our attention as a resource and we want to invest this resource as wisely as possible. Now, imagine if we have a 200 supply army, okay? Uh, and, and we think we're gonna have a fight in the next 30 seconds. If we think, well, we have four bases, we might start floating 1500 minerals. Is it worth it for us to completely focus on spending those 1500 minerals? Or would it perhaps be better to uh, completely focus on our army that is maybe worth 10k minerals and 5k gas obviously in that situation our army is way more important now we could be thinking about drops in this way if you have an eight marine drop on micro that's going to kill one pylon but when we use micro on it we might kill 22 workers um, would it be okay to float 300 minerals in that case yeah probably that probably would work now if we have that same drop with two marines um, and we either are gonna damage half a pylon or kill three workers and floats 500 minerals it probably is better to just let that drop be so the less important that little part of the army is the less resources mental resources you're going to dedicate to it and this is something you always see even at the highest level we can't pay attention to everything if i have a, a two zealot run by and i have a major fight happening my two zealots are going to be a moved and i won't even check on the minimap what they did i just hope they did a good job like a nice one zealot i'm, I'm sure you guys will be uh <laughs> you'll go to ir real fast you know um so <laughs> i don't know what that was uh, <laughs> so so basically what i'm trying to say is that don't over micro your units 
but don't be the guy that says to just focus on macro because it makes absolutely no sense think of your attention as a resource as well and see what would get you the most value which means probably not over microing your scout not over microing your early game units um, yeah in that case probably focusing more on macro is proper but if if you have a third base that is being attacked and you're just focusing on building five more probes no you probably should be thinking about defending that third base there's 20 probes there you building four extra probes during this time is worse than sa saving those 20 probes you know this it, it's really just a, a balance of things that and, and that's kind of how i think you should be thinking about it uh, and i think that is something that often gets told very very uh incorrectly by people because they tend to focus so much on macro because when, whenever people think of mechanics they think of macro but don't forget that fighting is also a me mechanic in the game people say it's like, dishonorable to be good at micro or something like that they feel like it's not the proper way to play starcraft mate there's no proper way to play starcraft you get grandmaster with cannon rushing if i can become the world champion by two gating my opponent i'm gonna do that i don't give a crap i'm here to win there's no real skill behind it. Yeah, sure, mate. 50k in the bank. What's up with that? Like, I, I don't know. It just makes absolutely no sense to uh, to not focus on fighting for me. But let's focus a little bit on the build order. Now, then I, I'm already messing this build order up a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, I'm also still practicing. I'm actually supposed to build a worker here. Um, and the cool thing with this build, build order, once again, is, is that it can have many layers, okay? You can have very many ways in which you do this builder so you can think okay i just want to get my buildings down in time um i want to continue worker production and that's it but you can also be microing your workers uh there, there's some tricks with gas where you can pull them out but if you don't have the attention for that if you're not that great at the game that's fine you don't need to do all of that okay that's always going to be the case oh, this is absolutely going terrible um so yeah it, it's already a little more tricky now and don't forget we can be adding uh, artificial difficulties for ourselves so we can say okay i want to go around my opponent's base with this probe i don't need to look at it i just want to go around his base no oh, i didn't don't think i put an opponent for myself this game nice one Kev. um another thing is when you're doing these little drills which um, are very helpful in that they help you warm up they help you get your mechanics down they help you remember the build order they also help you think about the build order in um, and that maybe there is certain things that you can change in the build orders like right now uh, I could think hey may maybe I need a faster gate or maybe I can do something here or, or you can think of reactions or little changes that could make the build order different it's like hey if I don't see him scout at this point I could maybe throw down a dark shrine or something like that you know there's lots of little things you can think of that you could potentially be doing so gonna be going up to two gates then get uh Two more get two extra gates sorry and then get uh our glaives going then we want to be getting a uh, robotics or a prism afterwards now something when we're talking about uh, time allocating and this is gonna sound stupid it's just a count because um what better way to realize how much time you're wasting just looking at an army that's not doing anything than actually counting that time I think I forgot this pylon really freaking hard. Holy crap. I thought I already was building one. That's gonna be a late warp in. Don't 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 watch guys. This pylon is supposed to be done. <laughs> Play this game 17 hours a day. Still can't not get supply block in the first four minutes. So you see how useful it is even for me guys. <laughs> um, so we're gonna be moving out with these four adapts. You definitely should be able to beat this time. If you're watching at home thinking, hey, this guy sucks, you might be right. Yes, I have. Uh, initially, the first warp is supposed to go down at like 420. So I'm about seven seconds late already. Relatively minor mistake, but still makes a pretty big difference. Okay. And now I really want to be going back to that idea of allocating time. So, and, and, and the counting, which is something I just mentioned and I never really uh, explained. So, um, if I'm thinking of the next few few minutes or the next minute and a half, I know with this build order, I'm going to be spending a lot of time looking at my adapts. 
or I'll probably have to if I want to get some type of value out of them. So if we think about 12 adepts on my crowd, they might lose to five queens and four roaches, right? They don't actually fight that well. They're very good against drones, they're very good against links, but against roaches, not so much. If you just aim move them, there's also a chance they're gonna start attacking, attacking extractors. So what we wanna do is we wanna say, okay, I'm gonna be looking out of the next minute, I want to look 30 seconds at my adapts. And we can count this, one, two, three, four, five. We can just look at the clock or we can kind of guesstimate it. There's a couple of things, uh, a couple of things we can do. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here when we're back into the game. So I'm looking at my adapts, one, two, three, four, five. I want my next warp in. I just hold position here. I go back to macro a little bit. I build a pylon. I check, hey, my next warp in is ready. One, two, three, four. Now, I don't need to look at this. I see this finishes. can get another observer. And we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can maybe do a couple of actions. Do this. Then we look at this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we can shade out. And maybe we, there, there's more things we can do, right? There you go. We have this, we can micro this. Maybe we get a thing over here and we can go back here. And you just keep counting maybe 10 seconds per thing. And then as soon as you're done macroing, you go back and you count another 10 seconds for yourself. You can control them. And there's a li little trick, like you can hold position them, you can shade them around or whatever. And all of these things will help you um, basically uh, allocate your time a, a, a little bit better. So. Uh, that's going to be it for this little drill. I have drill number three, I guess, which would be my build against Terran. After that, I'll do one against Protoss, and, uh, and then we're done. All right, let's go. Now, the fun thing about these build order drills, of course, is, like I said, we not only get better at our build order, but we also have time to think about things like our hotkeys. Um, is the way that I do my hotkeys right now is that the best way and there are good times to incorporate these changes initially and you can practice them against the ai um, without really feeling any stress of the ladder or potential mmr losses things like that so it's also something to obviously keep in mind um, that that this is a great time to change things or to to test out new things and to just think about unit movement or to think about scouting and 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 things like map control just in a in a more general sense like hey how how and at what timing do i want to think about getting out on the map with my units and at what timing do i want to have vision here and vision there these are all very useful things when it comes to to build order drills and i i like to pick a build that is uh, relatively flexible for my drills um, and, and and pretty tight as well so like you 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 want to have to struggle a little bit you know you don't want it to be too easy you know, we can pretend to scout and like i said um you can add in as many things as you want so what you could do if you're if you feel like a build is getting too easy and something i like to do um, is that you just add in the added difficulty of having to micro around the mineral line again and again and again with your scout uh, or you can try to to Pre pretend to prevent mineral mining like there's there's loads of little things you can do right loads of little things that will make you a bit faster and create more stress without it actually being a stressful situation like i could play against the ai for for an hour basically and i i, I could have i could make it more and more difficult for myself so i could do things like this where i'm just constantly mining from mineral patches trying to make sure my buildings are in time um, make sure everything works properly and make sure I never actually mine the minerals. So it's like pretending to, uh, yeah, to just block your opponent from mining or pretend like you're moving your work around. And this is the type of stuff that's really quite useful. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Now, all of these replays are obviously going to be in the description down below. So if you want to have a look at it and you can kind of figure out by yourself like hey how, how difficult is this going to be for me and uh how much time can i do for, for for useless things basically it's going to be the real the real question um do we get a stalker after this 
gonna send this bad boy back home because we don't need it anymore now we can just solely focus uh, on the build order build a robotics facility over here and also one of these things that you kind of have to think about in your sequence is scouting uh, that sucks because scouting is very difficult and unless you're at a very good level i'd say a lot of things don't really require a reaction now there are certain things like 12 pools um 12 pools and uh, like four rexes and, and cannon rush and stuff you kind of need to scout and respond to but a lot of like imagine you scout a natural a lot of the time that is enough information as long as you macro well and have a good builder and control your units in an okay way um you're, you're gonna be fine you don't need to exactly understand what's going on if you do want to uh, so a quick tip if you are not too sure about what the other races can do what's cool to do is to watch a replay to watch it from your own perspective and then just watch it from your opponent's perspective this will uh, especially if you do it in their camera this will give you a good clue as to what feels perhaps scary for them and what feels uh nice for them and how their build order functions right like hey like oh I, I thought he would have a factory or i thought he would have a cyclone at this point but he doesn't maybe i can do something with my units here maybe he isn't ready for a run by as i see he's rallying all of his units across the map you know like what are the things that look scary to him and this this is the, the type of stuff to recognize uh, your opponent's holes in his build orders and in their play in general so it's not only helpful preparing for things like a tournament but a lot of you will never have to prepare for a tournament but also just thinking about hey what would be good against this in the future perhaps you know what could i do maybe interesting to think about <clears throat> this one goes into the main base I can just build a bunch of units, right? Got this, this robotics facility. Now, I never really want to do those for too long because it tends to get a little bit uh, easier the longer you get into the game. So really, you just want to do like the hectic phase of the setup and perhaps some of the major scouting. But you don't really need to, like I said, don't need to react too much to scouting. You just want to have your little, you want to have your vision set up here. You want to have enough units. Maybe you want to get a battery in both bases. Who knows? I wouldn't mind it personally. I would not mind that personally. Having a battery in both bases. You can check for move outs with this observer. So you constantly just focus really on that uh, on that pro production. You always want to be producing probes. Always, always want to be producing probes. This is the main thing in every single sequence is producing workers is always number one. Producing workers and not getting supply of probes and pilots. It's the only thing that matters at the start. Then you can start adding more and more things into those sequences like producing units like getting upgrades like chrono boosting you see my chrono boost is staying extremely low um, a lot of you are going to be able to hit these building timings but are just going to have 10 12 15 less workers for no real reason i noticed this when playing with lower level players or watching lower level players is that sometimes they get the timings of the build down but they'll just be down 10 workers for no real reason um, that's going to give you less money and then after a while you can't follow the build anymore oh my god let's hope that's not covid um so yeah six minutes in i mean we basically got our build order done and uh that, that's basically drill number three with our pvt build we've done our pvc we've done the initial one with the probes let's hop into our final one which is going to be our pvp build another good thing to think about is um, to think about things you want to improve on in a session so very often after you do these things is that um, if you look at a replay as a lower level player or just as any player is that there's going to be too much information coming your way you do everything wrong how can you improve like that i mean it's like it, it it's just not possible you look at that and you see well i'm slowing 5k i was this and this uh, i have like 35 different strategical errors there's too much information so what i always suggest you do is initially before you start playing is you think hey what do i want to focus on today what is this very specific area i want to focus on and this can be simple things for me personally this can be things like uh in pvt when i play x build uh, like let's say an oracle build 
I never want to lose my Oracle to Mines, Cyclone or Viking. I want to always keep my Oracle alive at all costs. I want to use it for Stasis Wards into the mid game, Revelation and uh, some maybe Light Harass in the early game, but that's not necessary. I just want to keep it alive. This is my main concern. And whenever I look into a replay, I'm gonna be looking at, at three things. First of all, I'm gonna be looking at the main task that I gave myself. In this case, not losing the Oracle. Did I succeed? No. Why didn't I succeed? Did I succeed? Yes. Um, was there a way I could have gotten more value out of that unit while still succeeding? Something to think of. Then the other thing, number two, I always look at every fight I take. I look at the fights, I check units lost, I think, how could I have changed this fight? Okay, what is there that I could have done different in this fight that would have uh, gotten me a bigger win? or that would have gotten me in a better position or would have lost me less. Basically, you just want to look, hey, is there any way position-wise, micro-wise, what could I have done better? Number three, was there any, like what was the reason I lost? Or what was the reason my opponent lost? Uh, what did I do well in, in a win? Like did I capitalize on something? Or did I miss a win timing earlier on? Uh, these are the main three things. I like to write these things down. Um, and, and then I can look at them at the end of the day, like see the reasons why I lost, see how well I did in the task I gave myself and see how well my fights went. I think these are the three most important things in general and they help you with a very focused mindset on what you really wanna improve on. Okay, with that in mind, see, we're back in the game. Yeah, yeah it will come, don't worry guys. We're back in the game hopefully now. <laughs> these hotkeys still, you know, they're, they're new for me, okay? I, I don't tend to have any type of production at all. Um, <laughs> wait, I said PvP. Oops. We got ourselves our PvP build, and 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 really, you. Uh, I now I now set Oracle control for me because I already know my macro is quite good. But for you guys, this could be things like, hey, I don't want to be supply block in the first four minutes, no matter what happens. You know, that's a fair goal to set. That's a completely fine goal to set. Just write down that goal before your session and you'll notice if you're actually focusing on a thing, um, A, that it will go better, maybe not directly, but after a while probably, yeah, it will go better. And also it becomes more fun because you get something to truly track progress with. If you're just playing games, usually the only thing you can track progress with is your MMR. And that's a very dangerous thing to track progress with because you can just be losing a lot. And uh, the moment you use MMR as a way to track your progress, investing in loss becomes very, very difficult because it feels like you're getting uh, worse. And investing in loss, oh my God, here we go again. It's kind of the concept where you um, get worse temporarily for a longer term gain. So um, it's when you learn a new strategy, for example, you tend to uh, you tend to lose a lot with a new strategy because you don't know the responses yet, but because the strategy might be better over a longer time, eventually it will increase your MMR and your overall skill level. Um, that these things are very helpful uh, when, when you're practicing a new build order is to track your progress uh, with different pa parameters. Uh, rather than MMR and those simple goals you set to yourself can be really really helpful not only on a on an improvement level but also just on a as a way to stop the tilt or a way to stop focusing too much on MMR good way to alleviate some of that ladder anxiety that I know a crap ton of people still have and honestly I have it as well sometimes right like I see my my MMR go up to to a six nine I'm like Ooh, almost 7k and then you know, you start playing all the builds you really like and you start going down again because you're just not improving anymore. Typical, typical stuff. Um, typical, typical stuff, yeah. So let's continue here with the builder. And like I said, these parameters could be anything you want or the, 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 the little ways to track your progress can be anything. Time supply blocked, can be how you micro your units. It can be uh, how many uh, probes you have at the four minute mark in a certain matchup. Like these are fun things to track. Uh, they can show quick progress for you. It really feels like you're improving. I would suggest not doing the same thing too many times but do revisit the things that you've done already. So if you, for example, you say, okay, I want my Oracle control to be good. You might want to do it today and in, 
in three days again do it and maybe you can uh, slightly focus on it as like a side task you know just keep track of it, keep track of it on the side like hey am i still doing this right and sometimes you need to have another day of just focusing purely on your your supply blocks and sometimes there are things that take a lot longer to fix but don't focus too much on one thing like i said earlier we want to be improving things gradually at the same time we have many different small skills in starcraft and we want to be improving all of them we don't just want to become the one trick macro pony um, uh, that's terrible advice and i absolutely hate it when i hear that advice it just makes me angry it's stupid you just focus on macro It's really just the biggest lie in StarCraft. Uh, funnily enough, also usually said by people that uh, aren't really pro gamers, right? I don't know very many pro gamers that approach the game like this at all. Uh, with such a one-dimensional mindset. Even if it's just as a begin, I, I think it's terrible to ever begin like that. Sure, it might increase your mechanical skill, but you're just completely missing out on, on on other skills that you're gonna need to train later on anyway. So yeah, I don't know. It just seems to make absolutely no sense. And don't forget, our goal, or one of the goals, is to improve as quick as we can. Not only just uh, because it's nice and fun, but also because it gives us better opponents. And the moment we get better opponents we get better practice like it is better to play people slightly above your level than people slightly below your level right it's just it's more fun you become tighter you you become better quicker playing against better players you get away with less and at the end you play against Sarah and you realize everything was for nothing because you're never going to be able to beat him you've invested 10 years of your life that you're ne never getting back severe ties with families and friends because events were more important than them but that's the way of the world and that's the way the cookie crumbles i hope that went well i'm very afraid that i pressed the wrong hotkey i don't quite have them down yet but it's on the way now this build we're just going to be going up to 6k like i said the re replays are going to be in the description which are going to be very helpful because i i, I really don't go over the, the builds too much oh, crap i should have had a, a third base a little bit before gate four and uh, five and six but honestly it doesn't matter too much you can copy this just fine guys don't you worry my friends Ooh, some big call outs man today some big call outs i was getting so tired of these macro warriors i decided it was time to to call them out on their garbage now like i said earlier don't forget macro is very important but it's really the the investment or the, the time allocation that you gotta be thinking of it's not so much like always focus on macro that's crap advice That's just not good advice. Now, we're here, uh, and then once we're, we're about that around like uh, six minutes, we want to quit again. Um, so all of this, these, uh, these little drills take us about, if we include the Nexus one with the probes, it should take us about 20 minutes. Now, like I said before, if you don't have uh, 15 hours a day to play StarCraft 2, perhaps you only want to do one of them or you want to do two of them if you're lower level i'd suggest doing the the probe one it's very 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 useful uh and maybe pick one for for one of the races that you struggle with one of the build orders and uh i have a feeling that might just improve your game uh, try to write down goals that you have for yourself that you try to improve on and write down little notes after the game these are things that help it's very funny in starcraft 2 people often talk about uh, i want to complain and, or complain i want to improve uh and they'll ask for coaching and stuff like that and then they kind of magically think that just by watching a video or just by uh getting coaching is that they're gonna improve but you still need to play it works like that with everything in life you can just watch videos on the theory and think you're gonna be able to apply it in real life as well i mean it's nice that you know immortals beat lurkers but if you don't know how to build an immortal because the last time you played the game was in 2014 i'm looking at you yes you 
um yeah it's kind of useless so just keep that in mind all right all right i love you all it's been a great episode of the harsham hour thanks my man hamster for the new overlays look at that. even put a clock in there the time that i upload as well he really has an eye for detail doesn't he big shout out to my boy hamster thanks all for watching and i'll see you all next time yeah uh, that's it that's it man simple as that this is how you're gonna become a grandmaster just like me not sure if my microphone caught the kids screaming outside i hope not <laughs>